United Kingdom across planet Earth. This is BBC Radio 2 on the BBC Sounds app, on your smart speaker, and on 88 and 91 FM. BBC News at four o'clock. This is Tom Howrigan. The BBC has agreed to pay substantial damages to the former nanny of Princes William and Harry after false claims about her were used to secure a panorama interview with Princess Diana in 1995. Alexandra Pettifer, who used to be known as Tiggy Leg Bork, appeared at the High Court earlier to hear a public apology from the corporation over the fabricated allegation that she'd had an affair with Prince Charles, which resulted in an abortion. A 73-year-old man who killed his terminally ill wife before trying to take his own life has been given a two-year suspended prison sentence. Graham Mansfield was cleared of murder but convicted of manslaughter. 71-year-old Diane Mansfield, who had cancer, died at their home in Hale in Greater Manchester in March last year. The Foreign Secretary and Conservative leadership candidate Liz Truss has told the BBC that economic policies over the last 20 years have not delivered growth, suggesting measures during her own party's 12-year stint in power haven't worked. Ms Truss also rejected criticism by her rival Rishi Sunak that her planned tax cuts would drive up inflation. Our political correspondent Helen Catt says both candidates will want to start talking about other policy ideas as they campaign for votes from the party membership. The thing is, they don't have very long to get those differences across because even though there are several weeks for this campaign to run, ballot papers start going out from the first week of August. So there's quite a lot of pressure on them to get their differences across to the members and convince them that they are the best placed person to be leader, to be prime minister. The government has announced a series of partnerships with private companies to help families with the cost of living over the summer holidays. Under the scheme, some supermarkets will offer free or discounted meals for children in their cafes, and theatres in London will give children free tickets to shows next month. David Buttress advises the government on how to tackle the rising cost of living. This campaign is about doing what we can to help. This is about promoting and amplifying those businesses who are doing good work and saying well done and thank you and here's a load of great government assets uh, like our digital platforms to amplify and make people your customers and consumers aware of the great work you're doing. The US President Joe Biden has tested positive for COVID-19. The White House says he's experiencing very mild symptoms. Scientists have developed a new telescope which can detect the violent collisions of dead suns, known as neutron stars, more accurately. The process is thought to create heavy metals in the universe, including gold and platinum. The stars themselves are made from a substance so heavy, a small teaspoon of it would weigh 4 billion tonnes. Dr Kendall Ackley from Warwick University says the new telescope gives us a greater understanding of what's out there in space. Traditional astronomy was about being serendipitous in your discoveries and now we have almost a new way of looking at the universe. We're not hoping for new discoveries, we're being told where to find them and we're getting to uncover piece by piece what lays out there in the universe. Dr Kendall Ackley, BBC News, it's three minutes past four. Thanks Tom. Sport now, Shabnan Yunus Jewel. And you'll have been watching this last night, Steve, but England's quarterfinal comeback win over Spain has drawn the biggest TV audience of the Women's Euro so far. Up to 7.6 million people watch the Lionesses win in extra time and go through to the semi-finals against either Sweden or Belgium. Tonight on BBC One, it's Germany against Austria in their quarterfinal. Britain's Chris Froome has withdrawn from the Tour de France after testing positive for COVID before today's Stage 18. The four-time champion was placed 40th overall with four days of the 21 stage stage race remaining. Gloucester Lock Ed Slater has retired from rugby union after being diagnosed with motor neuron disease. He hasn't played in the Premiership since January. England's women cricketers are back in action tonight taking on South Africa in the first of three T20s in Chelmsford from seven. England can't lose the multi-format series which they lead 8-2 with South Africa needing to win all three remaining matches to draw level. And the World Athletics Championships continue in the early hours of tomorrow. 105 on BBC 